Bitcoiners, welcome back to another episode of Bitcoin Magazine Podcast. I am joined today by the two co-founders of Lipa, Patrick and Bastion. Really looking forward to talking about uh, their Lightning Wallet and the services that they provide. Uh, so I'll be joined by them right now by Patrick and Bastion. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having you guys. Thanks for having uh, so you guys are a company based out of Switzerland. Uh, you guys obviously are the co-founders of Lipa. Uh, so for our audience, if you guys just want to give a brief overview, maybe we'll start with you, Patrick, of what Lipa is, uh, what services you provide, and then anything you want to share about your business. Cool. So nice to meet you all. I'm Patrick. I'm the CEO and one of three co-founders uh, at Lipa. And uh, yeah, we are a Bitcoin company, uh, obviously, and uh, our vision is accessible financial freedom. And uh, what this exactly means is we want to make it very, very easy for people, not only Bitcoiners, to use Bitcoin as a means of payment, as a means of, of um, exchange. And um, therefore, of course, we are using uh, Lightning. Uh, that's an obvious one. And um, what we uh, were working on in the past uh, is uh, we were working on a, a, business, a wallet for business, so businesses can actually receive uh, payments. And um, as, a, as the next uh, logical step for us uh, was we want to enable not only businesses, but also uh, everyone else uh, to use uh, Bitcoin as a payment. So we, are, we were working on, on a, a Lightning wallet the last year, and uh, we just released it in, uh, in June. And uh, currently, we're focusing on, on uh, improving this, this one. And uh, yeah. That will be the short version of, of who we are. Yeah, definitely. Bastion, anything you want to add to that? Uh, no, he explained it very well. So um, just um, in my regards, I am the CIO of, of Lipa. And like as Patrick already said, we have a third person, Adrian, which is the CTO, which um, is like another part of the team. Definitely. Awesome. Uh, yeah, so I mean, I think it's very important. I think using, uh, I know Matt O'Dell is a good friend of mine. He always says, uh, privacy is not secrecy, but privacy is what you selectively decide to reveal to the world. Or And I think that's very important. I, I know he highlights the fact that using Bitcoin privately is a way to keep your self-sovereignty and to keep your freedom, basically. Because if everyone knows everything that you're doing, whether it's governments or large uh, large corporations, uh, obviously, you can kind of be controlled because of the lack of privacy. Uh, so obviously, privacy is very near and dear to my heart, but I'd love to hear how you guys have Im uh, you improved privacy. Obviously, many people say sending Bitcoin privately via Lightning is very good, but receiving it can kind of be a challenge at times that it kind of doxes uh, your IP address or uh, just kind of what you're using. So uh, I'd love to hear either Bastion or Patrick, either one of you can take this, of how do you use uh, Bitcoin more privately with uh, the service or the wallet that you have? Um, yes, as Patrick already said, uh, we are uh, currently implementing a non-custodian Lightning wallet, and with that, uh, we take a part of the uh, we take the part of the LSP. So we do a Lightning service provider in that terms that we open and and are managing basically the channels like Phoenix does um, for our users. Um, what we have thought about is like um, there's always pathfinding involved. Like if a if a, a wallet wants to send funds or receive funds, uh, basically when it wants to send funds, um, what Phoenix does is basically does trumping routing means Phoenix does uh, all the or ASIC does all the routing, the pathfinding for the wallet, and then returns the information to the wallet and sends it off. So. What Lipa does is we use the rapid gossip send protocol. So we have an own, we have our own uh, watcher, watchdog on the rapid, uh, on the um, rapid gossip pro um, uh, protocol, and with that uh, we crunch it. We crunch all the uh, network topology in one and send it to the phone. So the phone and the wallet, Lightning wallet on the phone, can do its own pathfinding. So yes, we have information about uh, how much funds go back and forth because we're handling the channels. We have view onto the, the balance of the channel, but we never know where to send it or where the funds were sent or where the, where the funds come from. 
Yeah, that's fascinating. Uh, I guess my question is, it's very interesting. Obviously, you're running a non-custodial wallet. That's my preferred method of choice. Uh, but I, for someone or business or individual setting it up, do they use their own node? Or is this something that you provide? Or is there an option you know, to do it you know, non-custodial with your node or non-custodial with their own node? I, I'd love uh, your thoughts on that. So currently, uh, as we just started, Patrick said like we um, launched the application in June. That was like to the occasion of the BTC Prague, we announced our public beta. And with that, we are in a very early stage with the application. So for now, um, Lipa provides, as the LSP provides the channel opening and provides the um, inbound liquidity uh, channels to the node. Okay, yeah, that's that's really fascinating. Um, so I guess as of right now, you guys have said on your website that you have obviously uh, the option or you're an LSP for individuals and businesses. Uh, as of right now, I guess maybe to you, Patrick, uh, is that an option right now or what are the two different buckets for providing like uh, an LSP service to personal or businesses? Yeah, first step, uh, obviously, uh, we are the LSP for our own uh, wallet, which is the consumer-faced wallet. Um, uh, before we, 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 we were working with businesses, uh, everything was a little bit easier because uh, we were running uh, one central node for the businesses. But of course, our vision is uh, not to st stop there and go further. So um, the next logical steps in, are um, that we will open up uh, at the LSP in the, in the future that uh, other companies can use it. That is one, one, uh, one, one logical step. But the other one is also what we want to implement in our wallet is that you can actually choose your own LSP. So you can choose whatever lightning service you want to use. You can choose, for example, Breeze's uh, LSP or whoever's. Um, so that's the vision for the future. Um, this will also um, yeah, increase, first of all, the privacy uh, aspect, but also it will will increase um, the flexibility and also the 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 being able to swim funds if one of the, those LSP might go down in, or um, yeah gets regulated out. <laughs> yeah, no, that that makes sense. I know historically it's very it's been very difficult for Bitcoin wallets in order to be profitable. Uh, we've seen just in years past. Uh, normally, it seems like probably the most successful model aside from being an exchange that has your own wallet. Uh, obviously, they make money on the exchange and then kind of using the wallet as a loss leader or um, or basically offering coin join implementations. Uh, I guess uh, in your uh, in your business model, do you see like uh, providing LSP services as a way to become profitable or coin joins or maybe opening up an exchange or a way to buy a spot Bitcoin? I'd love your thoughts on that, Patrick. Yeah. So our, uh, what we are working currently or what we are working on currently is uh, an exchange integration. It's not our own exchange. We work with a partner, uh, but it will be directly into Lightning. Um, so this is the next release we're gonna gonna do. A big re a feature release is gonna be uh, you can buy fiat from Fiat directly into Lightning in uh, whole in Switzerland and whole Europe, basically. Not every country, but most countries. This is step one. Um, so yeah, of course, this can be profitable, but uh, it's only one one part. Um, what we are looking into mostly is actually uh, additional features to the wallet that could be uh, monetized. Um, yeah, one one example um, would be that you could have a, a different use of Allen address. Allen address itself, uh, yeah, very very simple. Um, it's a simple technology built on um, Lightning, but uh, of course we could implement something like you can send uh, funds to a phone number. And uh, this can be in another country, and uh, there we could charge a little bit because, of course, uh, we we uh, will have to deal with regulation and all of that. But um, I think, yeah, additional feature on top of standard Lightning is the most um, logical uh, place to to um, monetize a business. Yeah, no, that that makes sense. Uh, speaking of like ad additional features and stuff, recently uh, Dusty Damon uh, kind of 
announced uh, splicing, or at least he announced it last year at Bitcoin 2022 and kind of showed it. But really, we've seen the first implementation with it at Async or Phoenix Wallet implementing splicing into the beta form. Is this something that you guys are excited for with your wallet and being an LSP provider for basically just-in-time liquidity of Lightning and SACs, being able to change channels or splice channels in and out to make them bigger? Uh, maybe I can toss that over to you, Bastion. What are your thoughts on splicing and its implementation with, uh, with you guys? Yes. Uh, splicing is definitely a good thing when it comes to, to channel management. I mean, for now, it's like you always have like two Bitcoin on-chain transactions to open and, and close a channel. And um, if we could use splicing for liquidity management within the channel, this would be a huge thing for us. As far as I know, currently, just Eclair has this feature. And unfortunately, currently, we do not run on, on Eclair. Uh, so our backend is LND based, um, but we are hoping and see and hopefully hopefully see a splicing with LND as well. Yeah, and I know LND and both uh, Core Lightning are trying to implement splicing. It just kind of seems that Async and the Eclair team kind of beat them to that. Um, I guess, are, are there any other features that you guys are really excited for on Lightning or things that you're looking forward to? I know Bolt 12 normally comes to the mind. This is something that's been on the docket for, for many, many years. And uh, I know these things don't happen overnight for sure. Uh, but I guess any thoughts, Patrick or Bastion, about um, like future features that you're looking forward to on uh, Lightning? Personally, uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I'm really um, looking forward to the day when this will be possible uh, because um, it, it can be a challenge. Uh, you know, the we love that uh, many companies work are working on uh, self-custodial wallets, but receiving um, funds is just a pain if if you need to be online at any time. So your phone, basically, when this is the place where you, where your node is running, it needs to be online and the node needs to be running and. Uh, this is a big challenge with with also the restrictions on um, mobile phones and uh, yeah, async uh, payments uh, in Lightning. I, I think it will be a, a game changer because for the general audience, this will be a much more logical. I can just send funds to Bastian, Bastian for example, without asking him to be online. Uh, this is, for me is going to be great. So yeah, looking forward to that. And also, Fashion. Yeah, yes, anything you're looking forward to. I, I, I'm really looking forward to Taproot. So uh, key splicing or um, key um, this distributing key flow over different over different areas is definitely a point for us when it comes to um, to node security. This is one thing I'm really looking forward to. And as Patrick said, Ball Twelve is something um, which. I think is a is, is some some kind of a next level. I mean, we have LNURL, we have Lightning addresses, um, but for me, it's just a workaround because it brings a custodian uh, into a system which should be non-custodial. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I guess I know that there was a lot of controversy at Bitcoin twenty twenty three, the year that just happened with. Uh, uh, Barack mentioning ARC. And I know that this is something that's not fully fleshed out. I know it's kind of a competing layer two. I know I've seen many of the Lightning companies saying, you know, why don't we fix the things we currently have versus making a new implementation on layer two? I guess, what are your thoughts on ARC? Have you guys looked into it at all? Do you think this is kind of uh, not FUD, but like, uh, I guess, competition to Lightning, or do you think they can co it coexist? So I'd love your thoughts, either Patrick or Bastion, on that. Um. I mean, generally speaking, I love um, competition and I love uh, innovation. So um, when I when I look at other implementations, I, I think it's great to look into it at least. I'm not sure if it's really the right way to go, uh, if it will, will be uh, the same level as Lightning or even better. Uh, but generally speaking, I, I love when, when there are several technologies dealing with the same problem, then we can find out which one is actually really the the right way to go in the long term and uh, uh, which one really solves the problems that we have. So, yeah, that's yeah, my definitely. general answer to that. Uh, I mean, it, it could be to any technology. <laughs> Sorry for that. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. Bastion, any thoughts on that as well? Yes. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm listening to a lot of podcasts and art was a um, topic of many podcasts. And um, from what I understood is that art kind of solves the um 
the liquidity problem or the um, the channel opening um, problem with like a Bitcoin a Bitcoin on chain on chain transaction every five seconds. And um, so with this, it does a coin join and so on. It brings in more a little bit more privacy. Yes, well enough. But I think a layer two should really uh, get the heat of a base layer. And with that, um, I think Lightning for now, and for me, is the better way. But it might be that I didn't un fully understand ARC and where the, the real benefits here are. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so I'd be remiss if I didn't bring up regulation. So obviously, you guys are based in Switzerland. Correct me if I'm wrong. Switzerland is not part of the EU. Is that is that correct? Correct. So uh, I know the EU has been trying to clamp down on payments. It seems like they'd love to push their own CBDC, similar to like what China and India have tried to roll out, even Nigeria as well. Uh, so I guess you guys kind of fall in this weird spot because I, I associated you guys with the EU, but obviously under uh, different regulations and jurisdictions. Uh, what is it like been trying to provide, I'm assuming, customer support, not just for Swiss customers, but people in the EU and even selfishly someone being in the US? I guess what it's like, uh, it, would you guys future plans to help US-based customers as well? Or are you going to stick uh, to Switzerland, the EU, and, and what have been the conflicting problems with regulations across basically three different jurisdictions, if not Asia as well, added into the mix. Uh, Patrick, I'll go with you first. Yeah. So um, our first focus, of course, is Switzerland. It's the easiest for us uh, when it's about regulation. It's uh, we know it. We are here, and and um, we uh, we yeah, it's our it's our home. <laughs> but um, we are not only working uh, in in Switzerland, but also in in Europe. Um, uh, we, we are actually allowed to operate in, or at least before MICA, <laughs> we are allowed uh, to work in European countries when we are regulated in Switzerland. Um, you can see other companies like Pocket Bitcoin, for example, or Relay, uh, the exchanges that are also working in other uh, countries in, in Europe, out of Switzerland. This is totally fine. But with MICA, there will be a lot of changes that we kind of know already but there's a lot of things that are also fully unclear uh, so it's very very um very hard to say what exactly will be the impact but it definitely will have impact on also swiss companies and we most likely will have to open a, a subsidiary in european country or european union country and we will have to get regulated by mica but until this is fully in in um, implemented uh, everything stays as before so uh, as you can see, there is ma many companies from Switzerland, uh, Bitcoin companies uh, working in European Union. Um, you also asked about US. Um, it's not, uh, you know, um, if we don't focus, we will kill ourselves as a startup. <laughs> it's yeah, very yeah. simple. We we had to learn this also very hard already uh, in the past uh, as 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 Lipa, but also before we even were named Lipa, uh, we are, we are working together for about three years, uh, the three of us, three co-founders and. Uh, yeah, focus is the more main thing that we need to look into uh, in the first years, and that's why we focus on Europe. Um, of course, we would love to be in other countries like the US, but also like Nigeria and other other uh, hotspots. Uh, but uh, yeah, looking at all them, uh, it will distract us from delivering a great uh, wallet, and great wallet is what we are what are focusing on at the moment and delivering this to at least Europe. Yes. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I, I hate to keep uh, on the regulatory framework, but I, I know uh, I, I've heard of, of Mika, and I, I didn't know at when it was going to be implemented, what year or what month. And then also, if you can give a, br a brief breakdown of what Mika could do, not just for your business, for Lightning or Bitcoin businesses in general, uh, if you can give me a breakdown, Patrick, that'd be great. <laughs> if I if I was able to give you a breakdown, uh, I would be the probably the only one in whole Europe who can do this. <laughs> but um, uh, what what um, I'm, that's my personal uh, view on it. Um, without Mika, we we had kind of a gray area around a lot of services in in uh, crypto and Bitcoin. Of course, uh, they they don't tackle Bitcoin specifically, but actually crypto. But um, what what it will do on is uh, is definitely uh, make some things more clear. If they will really help us, that's to be investigated. But uh, at what what uh, what could happen in my eyes is that Bitcoin and yeah, unfortunately, the crypto becomes even more uh, accepted by the by the general public. 
Um, and this, of course, can help us uh, tremendously. What on the other side will happen is it will make our life much more expensive. Uh, all the companies working in, in Europe, we will have to deal with this paperwork. We will have to hire uh, lawyers to, to look into all the details. And this will be quite cost intensive and also very slow process. I heard uh, numbers from one to two years until this can be implemented. And uh, this is just not uh, supporting a lot the, the innovation in, in the whole space. But uh, generally speaking, I think it could make um, things a bit easier long term thinking about um, having a, um, or knowing what, where are we are at and what uh, is the rule and what not. Yeah, yeah if, if there's one thing I've learned being in the working world for a few years here now is that lawyers always seem to get paid at the end of the day uh, with any company, you know, any regulation, any ruling, any lawsuit, it always seems to be the lawyers, the ones that makes out the bandit, not the companies the, dealing with these issues. Um, well, getting off the regulatory topic, because, you know, you'll drive anyone mad by listening to it. And obviously, Bitcoin tries to be outside of uh, or, you know, lives within it, but outside of the confines of the state. Uh, I guess, what things are you excited for, for LIPA and things that you're bringing forward? Uh, anything that you want to bring up as we uh, begin to close this uh, interview here? Anything, Bastian or Patrick, you guys want to bring up? Bastian, you want to go first? or No, go first, Patrick. Um, I, I mean, it's a long list, I have to think. But um, I'm, I'm, I'm excited. For now, I'm first of all excited that, uh, yeah, for LIPA, that we will have a, a our wallet on Android as well, soon in a beta. What I'm super excited about is that we have Exchange uh, implemented soon. So uh, we will be able to see how it's going with uh, on-ramp directly from Fiat to, to Lightning. Um, what I'm also excited about is uh, um, yeah, uh, following the whole uh, development and hopefully having... Uh, yeah, we, we were mentioning what we would love to see in, in Lightning, right? And uh, I really hope that one or two of those will be even uh, yeah close to to uh, to uh, reality uh, this year because yeah some features like sending money to a phone number or sending sending money across borders uh, will be much easier if if um, if um, if we could do it uh, without being a custodian in the middle with uh, Ellen address and um, yeah so uh, I'm really looking forward in such features. And uh, what I'm also looking forward to is, uh, yeah, getting more feedback on, on our wallet. Um, I know it, there's a, worldwide a lot more people uh, looking into Android uh, app, and we, we started with iOS. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really curious how, we, how this is going to go and where, where, where we will go with all the feedback. So, yeah. Definitely. Bastion, anything you're looking forward to on the roadmap with uh, Lipa? Yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, we, we, uh, we live and breathe Lipa. Um, now, for me, the most exciting part is, uh, is, is definitely, as I'm more tech, the LSP part. There are so many um, obstacles. There are mo so, uh, so many uncertainties at the moment. Um, I mean, within the time frame, we already managed to build uh, an LSP and already running it. Uh, but still, we have still some, um, some obstacles to overcome. This is probably one of the most exciting stuff for me. And yeah, for sure, I really love to see um, a non-custodian Lightning wallet or non-custodian wallet on the market, which is um, very user-friendly and even like no corners or um, normal people, like I love to call them muggles, um, to use this application and to send and be able to, to enter into the Bitcoin world, probably without even knowing using Bitcoin. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I, I guess I had one more question before we begin kind of the wrap up here. So uh, as you guys are running your own LSP, would you potentially help other exchanges if you're not already to implement Lightning? I know many exchanges uh, kind of fall by the wayside and don't have Lightning implemented. I can only think of a handful that have really only implemented them within the last year, but helping it like exchanges implement lightning and this is something that's kind of new to them uh, i know many exchanges uh, unfortunately are crypto exchanges in my opinion so they have other coins and they kind of are not incentivized to implement lightning because it maybe kills some of the altcoin narratives that they try and push but mm -hmm. would you try and help exchanges implement lightning as an lsp or uh is that some a service that you guys are planning to provide in the future for exchanges uh maybe i'll kick that over to you patrick um yeah uh 
looking at that, I think uh, what I it's it's bringing me back to the what I experienced in in the Bitcoin space since I am working in a Bitcoin startup, and uh, it's amazing the the help that we were given by different companies and also how much we were already able to contribute. I just talked to some engineers uh, recently from, from Lipa and uh, they were really excited about being able to contribute so much to, to the community um, by just uh, yeah, delivering some code or uh, helping with discussions. And uh, I, I think it's totally our spirit uh, at Lipa uh, to, to support. So um, we, we are also in contact in Switzerland with the exchanges. I mean, we work with one uh, who is enabling themselves Basically, but uh, we are very happy to support um, when when there uh, is need for support and when there is actually the will to implement Lightning. Uh, as you said, not all the exchanges are really looking into this, but if an exchange is looking into it, we are very happy to to support. So yeah, yeah, that's awesome, uh, Bastian. Anything you want to add? Maybe on the back end is what are the technical uh, difficulties? I'm I'm sure there are many of integrating an LSP into exchanges for the back end. I mean, Lightning is not a, an easy topic. Uh, it is from from the get go. It's it's very complicated to have all everything implemented, everything in place to have like a um, working liquidity management. You have a working um, node management and so on. And this is, um, I mean, an exchange is usually usually just sending. In, he has the liquidity and sends it out to someone else. And um, as Kraken or I think Binance started it as well now, um, they were working for quite a long time of it. So I think if we can help, I think just ask and we will see how we can help. Yeah, definitely. Um, so I guess that's pretty much all the questions that I have for you guys right now. Is, this, is there any questions that you have for me or anything that you want to highlight before we wrap up here? Um... No, uh, except that uh, I'm really happy to see not only our wallet um, developing. I mean, of course, uh, we are, have to focus on that, but I'm, I'm really happy as you as we had in the discussion before, there is so much uh, innovation going on uh, with splicing, with, 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 with a long list of different features coming from, from different companies. And I think, uh, yeah, it's, it's amazing to see what's, what's going. And I'm, I'm very happy that there is not just one wallet, but actually a, a bunch of them that are now also developed that are self-custodial. Um, I'm, I'm really happy to see what's going on in, in, in the space. And uh, I'm ex super hyped and excited. And uh, yeah. That's awesome. Any, any final words, Bastian, that you want to add there as well? Um, yes. I mean, um, Lipa Wallet just came out. And we're still looking for feedback. Um, we set up a, a web page, helplipa.swiss, uh, where you can give feedback, uh, go download it from um, from the test flight in the Apple Store. The link is on our on our website as well. Um, so try it out, use it, give us feedback. That would be awesome. All right. Thanks so much, guys. It's been a pleasure talking to you both, Patrick and Bashan. Uh, thank you so much for coming on. Uh, for everyone that was listening to the Bitcoin Magazine podcast, thank you so much for listening. Make sure to go get your tickets to Bitcoin Amsterdam or Bitcoin 2024. You can use the code BMLive to get 10% off. You can also use the code BMLive inside the Bitcoin Magazine store to get 10% off items in the store. Thank you so much, guys, for listening. And hopefully we'll talk to you guys again soon. Peace. Thank you, Miami, for the last three years in this amazing city. The whole world shut down, but Miami welcomed us with open arms. We want to show Bitcoin to the whole world. We are taking the conference on the road to set the stage for Bitcoin in a new city. Nashville. Bitcoin 2024 is coming to Nashville in Tennessee, a city that is known as a music and freedom city. Bitcoin 2024 in Nashville from July 25th to 27th.